just what I mean You too, T, keep it clean You see my boy, he like got a made it Boy, that's my homie, ain't that right and graving I understand First question came from my guy, Kevin S. He said, what's up, engraving blessings to you and your family? Hey, to you the same, my brother? Appreciate you, man. He said, I understand why you're saying the Ravens should get a big-time receiver. I guess I should have put it in my last email. Not that the Ravens shouldn't get a big-time receiver. I was saying they didn't need one. Uh, but I was saying that based on me thinking, what do they have to give up to get a big-time receiver? Money? A great player? Draft picks? Well, certainly them draft picks. I think draft picks would do it. Uh, if they got somebody that they wanted to unload to help, if they wanted to keep some more draft picks instead of giving more, then they could throw a player in there. Um, but if not a player, draft picks. Draft picks. Um, and, and me, I know I'm not the GM, but I would be more than willing to, to part ways with some. Uh, but anyway, uh, he said, put it together for us to understand that if they get this big time receiver, who and what do they have to give up that might hurt their current team? Thanks, brother, and Kentucky Cobbler's coming soon. Alrighty, man. Um, so, yeah, draft picks. Draft picks. Now, if it was a player, um, I would rather them not give up a player. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like the only player that they could give up, it would have to be somebody that's really not, not necessarily not valuable to the team. Uh, but, yeah, dra draft picks would do it. Because you look, who was the best receiver in the league last year? Best receiver in the league last year was Devontae Adams. And Devontae Adams has been one of the best receivers in the league uh, for quite some time. What did uh, the Raiders give up to acquire him? A first and a second pick. I think there was maybe some more change in there, but they gave up a first round pick and a second round pick. First and second. Tyreek Hill, one of the best receivers in the league. Obviously, probably, when you think about it, probably the biggest playmaking receiver in the NFL. Um, the Dolphins, I remember when the, the, the rumors first started swirling, and this was like all within like three hours. The rumors first started swirling that Tyreek Hill could be traded, and it was rumored that it was the Dolphins and the Jets that were interested. And then there were a lot of rumors that, oh man, the Dolphins, they, um, if they trade for Tyreek Hill, they're probably going to have to give up uh, Jalen Waddle and some first round people. Nope. The Dolphins, they just gave up, what was it, two firsts and some change? They, they just gave up draft picks. So for the Ravens to acquire somebody of significance, I think draft picks would be all that it would take. Running backs going extinct. Next question came from my guy, Romeo. He said, hey, bro, do Ravens, and especially offensive coordinator Giro, get criticized about being run first offense simply because the entire league is intentionally transitioning to seven, <laughs> to seven on seven passing only for safety and bigger plays? Or has the college talent pool gotten weaker? Please reply with your thoughts and thanks. And then he uh, included a Melvin Gordon video uh, titled, Melvin Gordon thinks the running back position may be dead in five to six years. Mm. Um, it's, that's the business of the NFL. That's the, the business of the NFL is a passing league. They say it all the time. Um, and, and it's one of those things where that, that is what it is. It's a passing league. They changed the rules to accommodate passing teams more, passing offenses, uh, pass catchers more, pass throwers more. You know how you can't even look at the quarterback without getting a penalty? You can't, you can't even look at him the wrong way. You know how you can't make any contact with a wide receiver without getting a penalty? Well, unless the right wide receiver plays for the Ravens. Then you can make all the contact in the world and give you no flag. But you, you, you know what I'm saying. So that's just the way that I don't, it didn't even got anything to do. I, I don't think Giro and them get criticize about being run first offense simply because the entire league is intentionally transitioning. Um, I think part of the criticism, at least from, from my point of view, uh, is because it's partly because the league is transitioning, but because the Ravens are behind when it comes to that. And, and they have this, this quarterback who I feel like they just haven't gotten the most out of. And this is going into his fifth year. So that's where it comes on in from my end. But that's where the league is going just as a whole. So, uh, are running backs going extinct? Um, running back, the value of running backs keeps going down. Um, simply because teams just, they feel like they can get a guy that they can plug in and he can be their star running back. And you don't have to spend a first round pick on. Now, some teams are still like Najee Harris from the Steelers. He's a first round pick. 
Um, but J.K. Dobbins, he was a second round pick. Gus Edwards, he was undrafted. Um, the and just speaking from the Ravens, they plugged in guys like Justin Forsett. Uh, they had Tyson Williams. They did um, Alex Collins. He went off for him too. So even with the Ravens alone, like they they've shown like you you could plug guys back there and it can work. Um, and other teams they've done the same thing. Uh, but running backs or the, the the value of running backs is just seems like it's continuing. Uh, to decrease wide receiver solution. Next question came from my guy Nova B. He said, what's good Engraven? First off, hope you and the fam and the rest of the team keep it clean or doing well. Oh yeah, we're doing really good. I appreciate that. Uh, I have a different take on our wide receiver situation. I wanted to know your opinion, but first I want to double down on something that I mentioned before. In my last question from subscriber, I asked about us acquiring Michael Thomas. Oof. Uh, now my heart still says this won't happen, but recent actions have my gut saying this is the move. I'll share the actions that have me believing this is possible. Uh, Michael Thomas wasn't the happiest camper in New Orleans last we saw him healthy. Uh, outside of James Harden, have we ever seen an injury take this long to rehab? Uh, you may also know Harden's results of the said injury. He was traded to the Nets. <laughs> uh, N.O. has restructured his contract almost every year. They honestly can't afford him, especially with him lacking in the best ability, availability. Oh, they, they can afford him. They, they can certainly afford him. Uh, but anyway, let's keep going. Uh, we've seen Winston limping and based off of QBs available now, and on his team, he can't be looking there, thinking he has a chance to reestablish himself as a top receiver all of a sudden. Uh, I, I think it would depend on how he feels about Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston is going to be their starter this year. He's going to play this year. And, and Jameis Winston, I feel like he is uh, he's slightly underrated. He's slightly underrated. Um, and I know everybody, they turn to the whole 30 for 30 thing. Uh, but I think Jameis Winston... Uh, with the Saints, he sort of started to uh, reinvent himself, um, but then the injury sort of de derailed everything. We'll see, of course, how everything goes. And when you think about it, like, you got Jarvis Landry, you got Michael Thomas, so you got your, your little, your short and intermediate route receivers, but then you got Chris Olave for the, 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 for the deep passing. So it's like, oh my goodness, like, that, that you, you said. And you still, I think they still got uh, Marquez Callaway. They got, still got Trey Quan Smith. So, man, they, they, got, like, they got a lot of receivers over there. Anyway, um, oh, <laughs> I should have just kept reading. Because he said, New Orleans paid Trey Quan Smith, draft, drafted Alave, and brought in Landry this offseason. He said, shout out to Baltimore driving. <laughs> he said, shout out to Baltimore driving his market up. Seems overkill when you're paying a guy 22 mil plus on the roster. Uh, like I said, I don't know if the Ravens make this move knowing how our front office is. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think they will. Uh, but my gut says this is the move. Let me know what you think. Now, for my actual question, LOL. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't be mad at Michael Thomas, um, but I don't think that uh, I don't think the Ravens would do it. Um, he says, so we've heard uh, the same few names float around the Ravens. Either guys who are top tier, Metcalf, Samuel, guys with questions like Odell Beckham or Vets that were great last decade. <laughs> like, <laughs> like Julio Jones, T.Y. Hilton. As mentioned before, I don't see us going after anyone except the guys in the last category. And I understand why people keep linking them to Baltimore as there's no proven help for Baby on the outside, but my idea is different. Look for a wide receiver two instead of a wide receiver one. Uh, so allow me to throw out some names that I feel should be considered as trade targets and let me know how you feel about them. Robbie Anderson. With the restructure, he's due 10.9 mil in 2022, 21.7 mil in 2023. Robbie Anderson. That will, he, will, he will be a nice one. He will be a nice one. Give us a, another deep threat. Uh, along with Bateman. Bateman, who, who got some underrated speed, man. Uh, and I think one of the reasons that um, I know I myself have sort of overlooked Bateman as a deep threat uh, is because we just simply didn't see him deep that often. Um, we didn't see any many deep plays go to him. I remember one in the Minnesota game, the flea flicker. Uh, I forgot who the running back was, but the running back got it, then pitched it back to Lamar, then Lamar threw it to Bateman, but the safety over top, I think they like hit Bateman low, and they, it was an incompletion, though. But, um, so, yeah, that would be a nice addition. And then, of course, it with Robbie Anderson, it would be uh, Rashad Bateman, Robbie Anderson, then all the other receivers, too. So, that'd be, that'd be a nice little upgrade. Tim Patrick, mm, that's a sleeper one right there. Uh, 4.6 mil in 2022. Uh, 11.5 mil in 2023, 12.7 mil in 2024. Very affordable contract. Somebody who used to actually be on the Ravens. Um, and he he made his way in the league. He he made it out alive. So shout out to him. That That's really, really good, man. Uh, Kendrick Bourne. I'm uh, not familiar with his game. Brandon Ayuk. Uh, 3.4 mil in 2022, 3.9 mil in 2023. 
Oh, uh, Sterling Shepard. Mm, nah, I, mm, no, not for me. But anyway, 6.3 mil, 2022, 4.2 mil, 2023. So affordable. The, the, these guys are all affordable. That that that's a big um, that's that's a big direction that this list seems to be heading in. Elijah Moore, so okay from the Jets, 2.0 in 2022, 2.4 mil in 2023. KJ Hamler, hmm, 1.9 mil in 2022, 2.2 mil in 2023. Denzel Mims, big body, 1.4 mil in 2022, 1.7 in 2023. That'd be a sleeper one. Now, ooh, McCole Hartman, that would be a very interesting one. Um, super, super deep threat, crazy speed, uh, return game. Would he push Ravens over the top? I think he will certainly help them out a lot uh, just because of the threat uh, of his speed alone. Um, and again, Rashad Bateman still got some underrated speed. Uh, I like the McCole Hardman one a lot. He's in the last year of his deal. Um, I like that one a lot. KJ Osborne, don't know much about his game. Uh, Rob, Robbie, uh, none of these guys are wide receiver two on their current teams, uh, oh, except for Robbie. Uh, but with the Ravens, they would be that. Anyway, I know this was a novel, so apologies, but let me know your thoughts. Could we trade for any of these targets, and would the acquisition move the needle for Baltimore, in your opinion? Oh, I, I like that you, that you put that. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like Robbie Anderson could. I feel like McCole Hartman could really push it. Uh, would he move the needle, though? Would he really move it? Or, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he would push it, though. Um, Mims, uh... As far as straight up moving, oh, Tim Patrick, that would be another good one. Um, oh, yeah, Tim Patrick would be, that would be a sleeper one right there, man. Uh, mm. Yeah, Tim Patrick, he, would he move the needle? He, he will certainly help push it, too. And um, I, I feel like that, that would be a significant upgrade, though, uh, over the Ravens' current group right now. So if I had to choose some from this list, I would say Robbie Anderson, Tim Patrick, uh, McCole Hardman. Mm, maybe Denzel Men, but certainly for the first three that I named. Next question came from my guy Sabri. He said, What's good, Engraven? What's good, Sabri? I uh, hope you and your family are doing well. It's funny how the Ravens aren't putting an emphasis on trying to improve the receiver position and in the past game when in reality, that's how they won their last Super Bowl. People forget in 2012 they didn't win the Super Bowl because of their defense. Uh, their defense certainly helped. Uh, their defense was middle of the pack, though. Um, their defense was like ranked like 16, 17 in the regular season. Now, in the playoffs, their defense did make some plays. Uh, they, they made some plays. They weren't like locked down, but they certainly made uh, significant plays. They were a playmaking, an opportunistic defense. They weren't locked down, shut down, none of that. But they were certainly opportunistic. But let's keep going. Uh, he said they won it because of their passing game. I saw a stat that the Ravens receivers accounted for almost 800 of Flacco's 1,140 passing yards that Super Bowl run. That 70% of the passing yards going to receivers, not tight ends or running backs. Uh, it confuses me how people keep talking about how defense and running the ball is going to win us the Super Bowl when that wasn't the case in 2012. I'm not saying we go full out pass, but we need to balance the offense to a 60-40 pass run offense. That will give us the best chance to win. I wonder what your thoughts are on the offense and what percentage you would want it to be when it comes to the pass and the run. Appreciate you, Sabri. Uh, that's a good question. I, I, I couldn't put a number on it. I couldn't put a number on it simply because, uh, now, y'all know I do want the Ravens to put more emphasis on the pass game, but I wouldn't want them to be like, all right, week one, we're coming out throwing the ball. All right, week two, we're coming out, same thing, we're just going to throw the ball. Week three, all right, we're coming out, we're going to throw the ball like crazy. For me, it would just depend game by game by game. You cannot do the same thing for every single team. You can't have the same strategy for every single team. Some teams, the, their, their run defense is going to be weak. Take advantage. Some teams, their pass defense is going to be weak. Take advantage. I really want the Ravens to take advantage of opponents' weaknesses, and I want the Ravens to be able to have a lot of different uh, ammo in their arsenal. Like, hey, we, we could run the ball on you. We could also pass the ball on you. Hey, we can get it to different receivers. We can get it to different playmakers. We can get it to tight ends, to the running backs. We, we could do different things. We could still run the ball. We can be creative with our play calling, and we can use our guys. We can put our guys in positions to where they can have success. We can put them in the best position for success, whether that's a wide receiver, a tight end, a running back, Lamar Jackson. We can put our guys in, in great position. So that's what I would hope for the Ravens this year, that this season comes with better adjustments, better game planning. And, hey, if your game plan ain't work, because all of our plans ain't going to work all the time. That's life. But if your game plan ain't working, okay, let's go to plan B. Let's have an adequate plan B ready just in case. 
Let's have some backup options, not a backup option. Let's have a plan B and hey, plan B ain't working, let's try to plan C. And then plan C ain't working, you know what, let's try to run it back to plan A. I know you can't over plan anything like that, but I just want them to just have options. Have options and use them efficiently. Shout out to Graven.